Jake when he turned around and saw what the guy was doing. He, he kept the, the flight attendant with him. He was just striking her. He, he just hit her repeatedly when she screamed. It all happened right by my seat. We were in the very final approach when the co-pilot appeared and the, the hijacker was moving up. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the hijacking of Flight 674. It's a miracle that Flight 674 didn't crash when most of the 93 passengers flooded the first class cabin of the plane. 727 was nearing its intended destination of Miami, but the hijacker definitely had something to say about that. Diaz continued putting pressure on the crew of the plane by beating the stewardess and demanding that the plane change its destination to Havana. At first, he produced a package, presumably a bomb with a wick, but it wasn't long before Diaz ratcheted up the pressure. His next move was a frightening development. Diaz retrieved a glass bottle with a rag stuffed in it, he continued demanding that the flight crew fly him to Havana. He kept the flight attendant close and administered regular beatings. It was around this time that the co-pilot entered the aft section of the plane to try to placate Diaz. He must have used hand signals or gestures because it seems likely that the translator that I mentioned in the last episode had left to join the other frightened passengers in the first class cabins. Diaz was irritated. He had a long flame on the lighter and moved it close to the bottle to scare anyone with an eye shot. The only passengers in the coach cabin were an intrepid few. A cab driver from Chicago, my dad, and the first officer of the plane. Around this time, a flight attendant began to gather and stack blankets next to my dad's seat in the exit row. The blankets would be a Hail Mary if Diaz lit the Molotov cocktail. At that height, in an enclosed airplane, an incendiary device like a Molotov cocktail would be an almost certain death sentence for all of the passengers and crew. My dad began to consider his options and just as he started doing so, an announcement came from the cabin that the plane was headed for Havana. The passengers in the first class cabin cheered. The captain must have taken manual control of the airplane because the 727 was flying at a lower, flatter, trajectory than you would usually experience in a flight like this. As we were approaching and he was realizing that this was Miami and not Havana, they, they started chanting Cuba, Cuba. At first, it seemed Diaz was fooled by the captain and the co-captain, but his violence and threats continued. As the plane circled and descended further, my dad looked out his window. He spotted a Holiday Inn sign. It was around this time that Diaz realized he was being duped. Diaz was at the end of his rope. The first officer appeared again from the first class cabin as he was approaching from the front. And as he was approaching from the front, another brave passenger, the driver I mentioned earlier, made a mad dash for Diaz from the rear. The slight man applied a chokehold to Diaz. My dad rushed in, knowing there was no other option, and grabbed the Molotov cocktail. In the melee of this tussle, the Molotov cocktail spilled onto my dad's dress shirt, soaking it with kerosene. Diaz's lighter was still lit. Flame got within inches of my dad's fuel-soaked shirt when my dad yelled out, Get the g lighter! On the next episode, what happened to the intrepid men who made the move on Diaz and the other 90-odd innocent passengers? Stay tuned. How things happen is very much a function of who's witnessing it.